Top 10 Svelte UI Libraries in 2024, brought to us by Eli McGarvey. Svelte has been gaining traction amongst developers because of its simplicity and performance. Now you compare that directly with things like React, where very often, and I've seen this, that uh, React applications tend to load a little bit slow. Once they're loaded, they're still kind of slow. It's very easy to overload uh, React very quickly. Svelte, part of the idea in the name, yeah, when why it's popular, is because it's so performant and fast, and it has an extensibility, has this gaining traction. Eli is going to take us through the top 10 spelt UI libraries that we are uh, that we see in 2024. Going through the list here, it doesn't seem like there's necessarily any kind of order, uh, though if we just walk through each of the 10, I think that'll give us the idea because we're going to stop here. We're going to start here at the top at spelt headless UI. Now, what that tells me headless essentially says it can work in any framework, not just uh, spelt. It could work React and Angular and Vue, any any other library, and even a custom library that you have a framework. So if you go to the headless UI website, you might not see Svelte on here. However, there is another site called Svelte Headless UI, which I'm pretty sure matches. It uh, basically has all the different components that you would know. The whole point is you don't want to have to build or rebuild any of the common components that we use when we're building our applications. And so, for example, you might want a list here, uh, a menu, for example, some options. This is pretty cool, like the radio group where you get to select one. Uh, it's uh, fantastic. We've got tabs. Ooh, transitions. Ooh, fancy. All right, there we go. Get some animations in there. We kind of take a look here at uh, the example. We've got list list button box here uh, and some code. There's also CSS, so it's kind of all uh, contained the way that we'd want it to be contained. Um, but it's really nice that these components are pre-built for us. Number two on the list here, we see Svelte UI. Now this one seems like the one after going through the list. This one is specifically dedicated to Svelte, right? In this case, the library has uh, 40 highly customizable UI elements, including all the essentials, include like layout, action buttons, and navigation components. And the less UI work you have to do, the better. There's already a common way to do these UI components. Uh, let's see what we see here. Uh, we've got some buttons, some input text boxes. Ooh, number. Uh, d data display. Does it have, it has loading indicators. Uh, I love those. These are great. And then a progress bar. Uh, overlays. Oh, like a modal. Yep, you want those modals. You have to interrupt the user flow sometimes. Not always, but sometimes. And then a date selector. Yep, that makes sense. Sometimes having a date selector is pretty nice. Diving in further, we're looking at Svelte's top 10 UI libraries. We see number three on the list. Remember, we don't have necessarily an order that's happening here. Number three is attractions. It stands up by providing visually appealing designs out of the box. Now, I kind of like that, right? I want something that I don't have to put any much effort into. Maybe I can tweak some of the colors to fit my, you know, the brand need. However, from there, the 49 components, we see that uh, base, oh, it's 49, pretty close to the answer of the universe, which is supposed to be 42, right? I think 42 is the answer. All right, here's our attractions website, 49 components. Ah, here we go. I really like how they show the source code along with the buttons themselves. I like how clean this is. It's really easy to see. Buttons are disabled. There's a neat ripple effect you can see. That's kind of nice. Oh, you could also disable the ripple if so you wanted. Oh, wow, and a whole bunch of configuration options. Okay, this one's pretty good if you need some extra configuration built into the component from a styling perspective while still being able to control the colors. Oh, there's an autocomplete, IUT. So we get some autocomplete here, that's nice. You don't usually see things like that. We've got our breadcrumb for navigation. Uh, what else we got? Badges for the badge icon. Okay, so this uh, attractions is pretty good, I would have to say. There's a lot of a lot of options. You're gonna find everything you need, and it's highly configurable, directly built into each of these components. Oh, they do a good job with allowing you to theme in with the SAS uh, pre uh, precompiled CSS stuff here. We see the ability to set colors. Oh, we get some font, main color. Okay, so we get a lot of different things here. All right, for me, it's it's looking like. Like a, a race between attractions and spelt UI. Next up, we have smelt. I <laughs> like that. A pretty good. All right, so Smilk, it says it focuses on aesthetics here, combines visual design with functionality. All right, let's take a look at their website here. Okay. I Another great aspect of Smelt that I'm seeing here is that it's specifically targeted for Svelte itself, the Svelte framework. So that's actually kind of, what What are chip? What are chips here? This is interesting. What is this? It looks like a button. Uh, what is, 
appears to be a button of sorts or a tagging system. It'd be nice if they described what a chip was from a UI element perspective, because I'm not necessarily familiar with that terminology. Although I could tell you that it just appears to be the ability to have, it's a button, but it's stateful. You can click on it. Uh, you can use it for tagging systems or to it's like a, to a toggleable button. Of course they have buttons themselves, uh, progress indicators. I want to check this one out. Oh yeah, okay load indicator. This is pretty cool. I like the dialogue here. Uh, it shows up nice and clean center on the page. This is pretty great. I like that. Oh, great. We have a date picker. The date picker actually looks pretty clean here. I like the date picker the most so far on the Smelt UI framework. I got some tool tips. From an aesthetics perspective, it looks mostly related towards just simple, right? Keeping things uh, pretty simple, not overly uh, polished or, or buttony looking, just mostly uh, uh, a streamlined simplicity. We're halfway through the list of our Svelte top 10 UI libraries in 2024. Checking out at number five, we see here something called Svelte Trap. If, you've, if you're familiar with Bootstrap, Svelte Strap is basically the same thing, but specifically written for Svelte. So in Bootstrap, it's mostly just purely CSS with some HTML. With Svelte Strap, you need a little bit more, just like React, you have to write the component itself and the component might have functionalities and plugins. And the story behind it is Svelte plus Bootstrap equals Svelte Strap. So it looks like they are just taking Svelte uh, uh, Bootstrap 5 here and specifically targeting it for Svelte version 4 and above. So you get absolutely everything that you would normally get from Bootstrap. If you're familiar with Bootstrap, you like Bootstrap, or you're currently working with Bootstrap and you're also looking to integrate with Svelte, then Svelte Strap is for you. I wouldn't necessarily choose it otherwise, although it does a pretty good job. Bootstrap's been around for a while, has been popular and due to its simplicity and to overall completeness, uh, it's been around so long that it d there is a high chance that you will get, you'll get basically everything that you need with Svelte Strap. Number six here, we have a, a Svelma, the Svelte library that brings the powerful, what's a Bulma component to the table? Okay, I guess we're gonna find out what Bulma is here. Let's take a look at their site. Could this be it here? Bulma is a CSS library. So perhaps what they've done is they've taken the combination of Svelte and this Bulma CSS library with all the components and capabilities. Ah, uh, yeah, and then added it into Svelte. So we get a whole bunch of excellent, easy to use uh, library UI elements. Okay, we get some pretty clean and easy to use. Uh, so collapse, okay, that's pretty great. I like this code, it's clean, I understand it. Look how simple it is. There's really only two things happening here to enable this collapse capability. We've got the import collapse from Svelma, and then we've got this collapse tag that we wrap around anything that we might want to have collapse. Although I wouldn't necessarily say that's easy to see uh, because I'm clicking on the button, but the buttons inside the collapse, I see a slot trigger. So I'm, I don't necessarily see the, what do you call it? Um, there seems to be indirection here. Like I, I don't see any connection. So I don't necessarily like this example. All right, taking a look at like a regular button here, we can even have a click counter with some state built in. It's actually pretty clean, although that's pretty standard uh, other than the UI and the styling of the button. Uh, this is pretty standard Svelte capabilities um, and React as well, right? It's pretty common. Oh, okay. So now we get some pretty colors, uh, easy to use, copy and paste. Here's all the buttons and the code. So that's pretty nice. Um, although they are just over loading type rather than having like a button that can like, uh, you know, I, this is okay. It's, it's fine. Here's configuration capabilities. Uh, less configuration is what I'm getting the hint at here when compared to the other libraries that we're looking at. Uh, let's, let's check out what other libraries we have. Okay. So we've got an Atlassian design system, the AU, the AUI. Svelte Atoms is, if you want to sort of mimic how Atlassian's designed their interfaces, Confluence, Jira, and things like that. You can use, that's the idea. That's the promise. Did they do it? Um, so at PubNub, we use a lot of Atlassian. We use a lot of Confluence. We use a lot of Jira and a few other Atlassian products. Uh, I'm not getting the vibe of Atlassian with this. So the, I don't necessarily see it from that sales perspective. However, if you are looking at these uh, icons, uh, progress, the radio, it's got a really nice switch. It's kind of neat. Um, I'm liking this. All right, overall, I would say it's fairly, fairly standard, fairly basic, probably lightweight, uh, not a lot 
lot of configuration. Though pretty standard and pretty basic, it could be an option. I wouldn't necessarily put it at the top of my list, though it does seem like it's doing a pretty good job. I like the simplicity and they do have some pretty good stock designs here. We're taking a look at the last three Svelte UI libraries out of the top 10 in 2024 that we have gotten here from uh, Eli McGarvey. Thank you, Eli McGarvey, for giving us this list here. I'm going through all the items and we are now at Svelterol. Svelterol. That is a little bit uh, uh, Svelterol. Okay, so the idea is that they combine the power of Svelte with the elegance of material UI. Oh, I get it. We've got the material part. We've got Svelte plus material. The name makes sense now, I got it. So if you're familiar with the material UI, then the material UI is what we're gonna get. All right, see it's uh, three years ago is when was the last update here, which makes sense that that was, you know, back when material UI was a little more prominent uh, as a new and up and coming tech. You know what? I'm looking at this now. It does not seem like it's complete like the other libraries. I only see an icon button. Uh, I don't know if this one even can make the list. Uh, potentially because it's a top 10 list, so we needed a filler item. This counts, right? Because it's built for spelt. There is nothing else here. Okay, we can ignore this one. Never mind about number eight here on the list. Uh, it's possible that that's just the incorrect URL. Let's double check really quick. Okay, so I did a quick Google. I see spelt ma uh, material fi. I see a couple of other ones. And so there's, there's a disclaimer on this one as well. Uh, and then I click into this one and I get a 404. It's like that one's deprecated, but removed in this one. So, I guess we can still ignore it. <laughs> There's nothing here. All right, goodbye, Svelte Material UI. We have an agnostic UI at number nine. So we've got number nine and 10 to go, agnostic UI. Sounds like a headless UI, right? So you could, oh, is it? Am I reading this correct? Svelte, React, View, Angular, okay. So they provide an easy way for you to plug those in to those other frameworks as well. It's kind of an agnostic UI. It seems fair to add it onto the list here. It's not dedicated to Svelte in any case. So let's check out what they offer. Maybe it is a good option for us. Okay, uh, it is very basic. Like I'm, I'm seeing some basic stuff, right? We've got we've got the elements that make sense. Some nice pop-ups. We've got pagination elements here. We've got progress bars. We've got some load indicators. Nice clean load indicators. And I, I like I like that. Oh, what is great about this is they let you view the source for each of these different kinds. So that's clean. As a user experience, I kind of like to see that. I, I want to see something clean like that. And of course, the two that are the most you know, almost identical here. We've got Svelte here at the bottom, which I like the, the syntax here is cleaner than I see here for uh, React, for example. Svelte has a nice implementation. What about Angular? What does that look like? Oh my goodness. <laughs> Okay, yeah. All right, so Svelte is fantastic from a user experience perspective. I like how clean that is comparatively. So while agnostic UI is pretty universal, what's kind of great about this is if you are choosing to have different frameworks for your JavaScript front ends, right? You might have you know, some Angular over here or some Vue over here. React is on this team over here. You might have, you know, Svelte on another team. You can all use the same UI. This actually has that benefit. So by using a headless UI like Tailwind and some other, uh, what was the other one? So we've got agnostic UI and a headless UI, right? Right, the headless UI. You can use these kinds of frameworks specifically when you need to bring them across multiple, multiple teams, and multiple projects. So I would say that's like a really good use case for the agnostic UI. Otherwise, some of the other libraries that we see here from a UI perspective are a lot cleaner. We're jumping down to the very last one. I see something called Framework 7. Now, this doesn't seem so much of a dedicated UI from a library, but it is specifically for a mobile hybrid uh, approach. So you can get something that works on mobile and web at the same time. Let's check out Framework 7. Their website's fantastic. I love to see this. It's really cool. So we've got uh, a nice design. I feel I feel like I'm jumping into you know a project here that has spent a lot of time on aesthetics. As a bonus, Svelte, React, and Vue are supported, which is pretty fantastic. And the source is phenomenal. I love this. All right, so it's very clean, easy to see. So we got a nice button here. It's very buttony. 
a lot of configuration options. This is fantastic. Yeah, look at this. This is great. Okay, so you get that. Okay, so it's specifically targeted at um, building UI for mobile in this case, right? For targeting mobile designs. So we got our Android design, our Apple design here. And we got a light and a dark theme. This is where you're gonna use Framework 7. If you're building a mobile application uh, with JavaScript and any of these frameworks. So we take uh, Vue, React, or Svelte, and then we wanna build a mobile app using JavaScript, Framework 7 is the right choice for you.